How's it going, guys? So with me, I have Spargo, who, in my opinion, he is currently the second best player in the world. He had a meteoric rise during the online phase. Uh, I would say he's the best online player. And yeah, like it was actually ridiculous. Like you just got, you just kept improving very, very fast. What would you say is the uh, main reason as to like why you were able to improve so quickly? I feel like uh, before quarantine, like before the pandemic started, uh, I wasn't doing that good because I wasn't able to travel that much. So uh, I lacked of experience. Like I didn't have that much experience. But when quarantine started, uh, I started playing versus a lot of top players. So that way I got the experience I needed uh, to improve. So I play against top players, even if it, it was online. It helped me understand the game better. And when offline came back, I just, uh, I just applied all my knowledge. I gained uh, Wi-Fi and then I'm really good at adapting. Like it wasn't really hard to transition from online to offline. I just applied all my knowledge and it wasn't that hard to like adapt. I just uh, added like reaction and stuff. And I started doing pretty good uh, quick quickly. Like, like I say my first, tournament that I won. Not not won, but I did good after quarantine was summit. And yeah, it was like so yeah it didn't take me that long. So I feel like I was playing against top players uh helped me improve even if it was if it, even if it was Wi-Fi. That's impressive because you're making it sound like it's just super easy. You know, you play good players and you get better. While that may be the case for you, there are a lot of people who have been playing like far less than you they you know they, they, they they'll play against really good care uh, they'll, they'll play against really good players but they've never been able to become a top player or you, you know at, at least not as fast because what you're saying it makes sense but it's just ridiculously fast <laughs> it's it's incredible <laughs> yeah. let's talk more about summit because that was the first big offline event that you went to i'm sure you surprised a lot of people Myself included, like I thought you would do really well because you know you, you got to a good amount of SoCal tournaments. I know how how good you are, so I'm like, okay, he's gonna throw people off guard. But I'll be honest, when you beat Zachary, I was just like, Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> how, like it, it just felt like some something I noticed about you is that you'll play someone in a single game. And it feels like the next match you play, you heavily adapt to them. What was your uh, approach towards uh, competing at Summit? What, what what do you think you did that allowed you to get the result you did? Because you, you got third, which is it's pretty good. A fun fact is that Summit was supposed to be my last tournament because <sighs> after, uh, after, after Smash 4 Tour, it was like a few days before Summit. So I was really sad. I, I did pretty bad. I mean, it plays like fifth, and then and I went to summit with no expectations because I was like, okay, I'll just play and then and then I'll quit because I don't know, I just don't don't want to play anymore. But then uh, when I first arrived the venue, uh, Leo came up to me and said like, I feel like you're really good when I play your Smash Four Tour. You have a lot of potential, and I feel like you can beat everyone here. I believe in you. Uh, Leo told me that, so it really meant a lot to me. Mm. So I played my best, like. I mean, I played like usual, and then after I beat Twiggy Pools, I, I was like, uh, okay, I, I guess uh, I'm good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm better than I thought, and I just continued my run as always. And I honestly re didn't expect to, to play that good at Summit, because I was like, okay, I beat Riddles, and then I'm gonna play Sacre. Uh, I thought I was gonna lose, like, I didn't, I didn't believe I could beat Sacre, because we played friendlies. He beat me pretty bad. Like, we played Summit at Friendlies, and I took a few games, but Sacri mm. will win the most. So it was like, I mean, maybe, just maybe I can beat him, but it's gonna be really hard. But then that happened, like, 3-0 happened and stuff. And I was like, okay, I guess I can beat everyone. Like, I mean, I guess it was right. So it was like, if I, if I play at my best, I can beat everyone. I mean, that, that was my mindset. So uh, I played Twig next. And it was like he adapted really good. Like it was yeah. way different from when I played pools. It was like I was, and then I was just like, uh, it's okay, I can bring it back. He played really good, so I was not upset at all. At mm -hmm. all. And then I played Leo. And honestly, uh, he went, uh, when he went Joker, like when he picked Joker, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm gonna win this. And even if I, I didn't win, 
it was really really close it was closer than i thought it would be because I mean, I was up 2-0, and I got reverse trio. Just Leon just does that somehow. He always does that. <laughs> yeah, you just became another statistic, man. I, I I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I can keep up with uh, the best player in the world, like I was really close to beating him, then then I guess I can become good. I can become like a really good player in the future. I just mm. gotta continue doing my stuff. So yeah, uh, if I I feel like if I didn't do good at Summit, if I didn't place well, it would be my last tournament. Like. The only reason I'm still here is because I I placed third. That's crazy to think about because you're like you're you're so good. <laughs> you're, you're you're such a good player, and the fact that you just wanted to quit, I that's that's my that's mind blowing to me. I and you're also very young. You recently turned sixteen, so happy yeah. happy belated birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, that's just that's that's cra That's just crazy for me to think about. Like I'm still thinking about, I'm still thinking about like you're gonna quit after Summit. I'm I'm really glad you did it uh, for obvious reasons. You've been doing incredibly well in like every event you've been to. Like you haven't placed lower than third offline. Yeah, after uh, Summit, uh, I mean, since Summit, I haven't placed lower than third. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like your level of consistency is impressive. A lot of people may not know this, but you actually played Smash 4. You played Smash 4. Uh, I don't know if you went in, into any offline tournaments. But yeah, let's let's talk about that. Uh, well, I guess my first question is, is Smash 4 your first competitive Smash game? And if so, how old were you when, when you were playing it? I was like 9, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I discovered the competitive scene. Like, like in Smash 4 and I was like I saw some videos on YouTube and I didn't know there were tournaments so I got really interested in them and I was like one day I want to be there like I want to be a top player someday like when I was like nine years old or something uh I just started grinding like back in Smash 4 for glory <laughs> I did it. uh and then I discovered there were some offline vocals like near my region like near my area so I started attending them. I didn't do good at first. I went on almost all locals. I went like one, one, two or something. I just kept playing because I was like, I just can't keep trying again if I don't if I don't do well in this tournament, I can just try again next time. That was my, my mentality. So so I I eventually won a tournament. I want to become the best in my region. And, and even if I didn't have the chance of of attending a major because I was at the end of Smash 4, I was 12 years old and I wasn't able to travel. But the best player in my region was like top 10 in Mexico. Like mm -hmm. no one knows about this, but but I always beat him. At the end, I was the best player in my region. I was like a hit, uh, hidden boss in Mexico. Everyone knew about me, but I never had the chance to, to travel. Yeah, I was young. I was 12. And yeah. so yeah, I basically was kind of good. Never had a chance. So when Ultimate came out, I was able to, to travel for the first time to Genesis. And it was my first tournament. I placed for nine or something. So yeah, yeah, it was good, but never had a chance to travel. That's that's impressive still. So you won your first tournament at 12, I think? Uh, no, 11. Oh, at 11. So you won your first tournament at 11, and then you became the best player in the region at the age of 12? Yeah. That's crazy. Like, just to think about it, some people your age, like 11, 12, like, they, I mean, obviously they'll play video games, but they're just not playing at the level you're at. That's just insa <laughs> insane to think about. And then also to be the best player in your region, like you're you're in Tijuana, Mexico. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna say if, if you're if you're consistently beating a top 10 player in Mexico, you have to be a top 10 player in Mexico. I would say Mexico is one of the most underrated regions. Like even in Smash 4 that like Mexico was, 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 was severely underrated. I mean, you know, MK Leo, was considered a hidden boss, and he was, he was beating all these top players in like when they come when they came to Mexico, and now look at him. Uh, so yeah. kind of a similar thing. I I really wish that we could get more spotlight on Mexico because again the region is ridiculous. There are a lot of really good players, a hidden talent like yourself. Out of curiosity, would you say that practicing offline? or online helped you more overall so like not just not just an ultimate but like in like including smash 4 the beginning of ultimate do you do you feel like uh grinding online or offline is what made you like a better player i feel like uh grinding online is good because you can play against more players like if you only stick to your locals you'll always play the same players but i feel like on, on wi-fi you can just play different characters and get more experience and stuff 
I mean, at the end of the day, offline is always gonna be better. But if you if you don't have a chance to travel or attend or attend tournaments like outside of a region or even in your region, I feel like Wi-Fi can be good. But yeah, at the end of the day, offline is always gonna be better. Like I feel like online is only to to gain more knowledge about about the game and gain more experience. And offline is when you have to apply all all that knowledge into game. And I feel like online works. Like it's really hard. I know it's really hard to to keep practicing on Wi-Fi because the way is pretty bad and it is so so stressful. But also, uh, one thing that helped me improve a lot was that I always used to bot review like top players set, uh, sets of top players like high, uh, top level gameplay. Like if when I didn't have the chance to play Wi-Fi, I just watch videos of MKWell or Tweak or or just or any any other top player, and I, I analyze it, and I was like, I tried to understand why they did those options. Like yeah, just understand how how it worked, and I try I started I started their their videos, and I tried to apply those stuff to my gameplay, and and it worked. I feel like doing bot reviews is really good to improve. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I feel like that's something that a lot a lot of people don't do i think watching sets this helps you determine exactly why what they're doing works i mean you said it before but i guess to, just to, just to dive a little bit more into it there's a lot of situations where you'll see someone say oh man so and so always gets away with that well if you watch their sets and then analyze what they're doing they conditions their they condition their opponent in such a way in order to get away with that or they're positioning themselves in a specific way like to, to like make that situation work. When I watch top play with gameplay, like I always see people say like, oh, they're mashing so much or something, but I don't know. I just don't feel it that way because at top level gameplay, I feel like I, it's really rare when someone like mashes because every option they do, they have an intention behind it. Like mm -hmm. they do options just to do it. So I feel like, I don't know. Uh, there is some really smart plays going on top level gameplay that is just shadowed by the, oh, he's mashing or he's just, pressing buttons or stuff. Uh, I feel like if people try to understand like why those players do that, do that options and I don't know, just intentions behind it, uh, they, it will be easier to improve for them because they could just apply that stuff to their gameplay. Yeah, that's what I did. Like if I saw some rare option when top level gameplay, I tried to I tried to analyze and understand why that option worked. And uh, because there's a lot of mind games in top level where, where the obvious, the obvious option can be good because i don't know i feel like ultimate is a game where there's sort of mix up like there is not a correct option most of the time it's just the way you mix up your options so it makes it harder for your opponent to predict what you're gonna do so i learned that and i try and try to apply it to my gameplay that that's good that's that that's how you do it there are, yeah this game has a lot of layers and there are a lot of people who don't see the layers they just see like a particular option they say this beats this but they're not seeing the countermeasures or like the setups to actually get that situation to work to begin with. Again, it's impressive that you were able, you know, you caught on to everything so quickly. It's 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 really, really good. I also like what you said regarding online. So, you know, it's frustrating. You're, you're, you're saying that online is like a reference point. It's where you get, you, it's where you go to gain knowledge. And then offline is like where you kind of hone your uh, precision and stuff like that. That's really, really good. Okay, so Smash Roll Tour is coming up. It's this upcoming weekend. What are your plans to win? Because, you know, I would say that MK Leo is the favorite to win the event, but you're definitely the runner up. So what, what are you planning to do to get the edge to go above Leo and, you know, take your first tournament above him? Uh, first of all, I, I need to beat every player that's in my path, like before Leo, I need to beat everyone. And then when I, when I play well, like once I, if I, if we meet the grand finals, we're just gonna play as usual. Like I started my bots versus him. Like even if it hurts to watch them, I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn uh, some things by watching them, like what I did wrong and stuff. And I feel like I learned a lot from my set for, from main stage. I'm not gonna go into specifics because I want to save those yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. for, my, for of, myself. Of, like, of course, uh, of course. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I have a lot of out of out of new stuff like I will apply in Smash Four Tour, and because I feel like if I play uh, that matchup, like I don't know, I feel like I shouldn't do Violet Parametra because that matchup's really bad. It's just empty well. But if I play like optimal, I shouldn't do that. In my opinion, it's just Leo that is good. 
he's just he makes Violet look at a top tier. Like I say, Violet's underrated, but still, Leo makes his makes that character way better than than he seems. But yeah, I feel like I I can win Smash Water if I play at my best because I don't see I'm that far uh, behind from Leo. Like I know I'm the right now I'm considered the second best player. I feel like in the future uh, I can be the best. I just gotta keep playing and keep being consistent. I wholeheartedly agree with that, especially again consider considering your meteoric rise it just feels like you catch on to things insanely fast and i i gotta say because we haven't really talked about you know i mean we, we we've seen each other in person but we haven't really talked about like the game that much i have to say i really 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 like your approach and minds in your mindset towards uh improving and playing because it's just something that I feel like not a lot of people talk about. You know, a lot of I, I feel like I feel like a lot of a lot of players they kind of just write things off quickly. They just say, "Oh, well, this is just broken." But you're actually actively trying to improve and not just like accept things yeah. for the way they are. Like you're yeah. trying to learn. Yeah, I feel like uh, also one thing I, did, I didn't mention is that I'm a re I'm a really really try hard person. That I feel like that's one of uh, the reasons I'm. I was able to improve really fast. Every time I lose, like I try to bot review uh, my sets. Even if it hurts to watch them, I was uh, trying to learn a thing so I can I can do better next time. Like there was there was a tournament uh, where I was to check in Mexico, and I was like uh, I was really disappointed. So I bot reviewed that set. I mean, someone helped me do that. And I had like 48 pages of just notes and stuff. I noticed uh, I, I still have a long way. Like I still, there was still a lot of like a lot of I could improve in. So next time I played him, I beat him really bad, like 3 1 3 0. Oh. And I just kept doing that uh, with my future sets. Like every time I lose, I try to uh, analyze my sets and try to see what I can, I can improve with. I feel like that's one of the reasons why I was able to improve pretty really fast. I just, no. when I want to become better i try my best to do that that's okay i i, I want to make sure i heard you right after you lost a chag you made notes that that ran up to 48 pages yeah something about like 48 or something there is just it was two uh, it was a grand finals it was two sets so i had out of notes like it was uh, what i did wrong uh check's habits uh my habits it was it went in depth it, out of a lot of stuff you're like one of the few people I've I've talked to who has made like intensive notes like that. That's actually you're, you're just you're 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 just impressive. You're phenomenal. I I I, I can't. That's 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 <laughs> that is that's that that is insane. But I mean, it's obviously been paying off. That's why you're that. That's why you're as good as you are. So. I feel like you, you're one of the people who change a lot of, a lot of uh, people's opinions on cloud. So I guess, what do you, what do you think of cloud? Like, do, do you feel like the 7.0 buffs are what ma like made him as good as they were? Because you, I don't really think you competed offline, like post 7.0, like before quarantine, like in a, at a big event at least, right? The 7.0 update is the one that uh, buffed his recovery. So it's the one that gave him four extra frames. Oh, of... oh yeah, that buff. Yeah. It was it was a really, really significant buff. It was like right after Genesis and I didn't attend any major after that, but I feel like they made Cloud way, way better than he was. Like they buffed Limit, they buffed Dash Attack, Up Smash, uh, Recovery. I saw that before that buff, Cloud was like mid tier or something. Like I don't, I didn't think he was that good, but I feel like Cloud right now is like I don't know, uh, at the top of high tier or something. Okay. Because I'm starting to have more faith in Cloud, because uh, during the online era, people were just were just like, no, Cloud is a good offline. You can just parry his stuff, and I was like, uh, no, there's so many counter plays to parry, like you can just you cannot just feature for parries and expect to beat Cloud, like. That's sort of what a lot of people think versus Cloud, but Cloud can work around that really good. Like he can tomahawk a lot, he can delay the timing of his aerials, he can just I don't know, he can do a lot of things. A few months ago, I felt like Cloud wasn't that good, but I don't know. After main stage, like where I beat T and and White with Cloud, I was like, okay, maybe Cloud is way better than I thought. I want to play more Cloud, honestly. Like I. 
I made Paramitra and always use Cloud for for bad matchups, but I don't know. I feel like Cloud, I should use Cloud, Cloud more. I, he's still the character I have the most fun with, and I feel like I once yeah one thing I think of a lot is that if Leo can be the best with Violet, then why I cannot be the best with Cloud? I mean, I'm still gonna play Paramitra, but I should trust more in my Cloud because I feel like he's just really good, and I think I can be the best with. Cloud and Paramitra. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, I I definitely think Cloud is really really good. Like you were saying before with Parry, it's not that easy. Like you can't just parry Cloud and expect to punish him. Like I guess another situation too is like let's say you parry his back or he does it low enough and spaces it so that he hits yeah. you with like the tip of it. You're not gonna you're not gonna punish it. Or most yeah, characters you can't. Either way, you cannot punish that. Like, Macri is like minus three, and yeah. Parry is like minus six, I think. So, even if you parry, you cannot punish that. Only with very specific stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what made you main Cloud? Because I, okay, so I guess let's go back a bit. Because you main, you main Cloud in Smash 4, to my knowledge. The, who did you main before Smash 4 Cloud? Uh, I actually had no main. Like, oh. I went to Wuckles and just picked a character I, I was like, I just feel like using this character or this one. So I went a lot of characters in Wuckles, but okay. then one day I went Cloud and I was like, okay, this character, I feel this character is different from the others. So I like Cloud more than any other character. So I started practicing Cloud after that tournament. I just went to my Wuckles and started playing only Cloud. And then when Ultimate came out, I was like, I was like, man, Cloud was really nerfed, but <laughs> I, f I feel like I still can make this work. I feel like I have more fun playing with this Cloud than Smash 4 Cloud, because I don't know, he it looks, he seems faster because everything has less lag. I mean, mm. he doesn't have Smash 4 upper, but overall he, he is a, a more fun character to play with. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely see that. I, I, I feel like, uh, I, I feel like Smash 4 Cloud was more of a passive, uh, character than he is in ultimate yeah i think so too like it was just boring to play Cl smash for cloud sometimes like the way you had to play some matchups it was just very boring that up air just running running <laughs> up to just being able to run up to someone and short up up air that was just yeah. <laughs> jesus christ okay how good do you think Cloud would be if he had that Smash 4 up air? If he could just run up and up air everyone? I feel like this upper is good as it is, but the only thing that would make Cloud upper right now better is if he could hit like opponents, like small characters mm -hmm. when landing, like in Smash 4. Because right now he can still do that, but only against tall characters or or if he does against like uh, I don't know Mario Wolf or something, it's a really hard timing, but you can do it. I feel like with Smash 4 upper, he would be like Top tier, I think, but at the very end of top tier, like he okay. would not be like crazy good. Okay, so you don't, so you don't think it would be that significant of an improvement, but it would be no. an improvement. Okay, okay. Let's talk about Pyramithra. So when when they came out, did you decide to to main them or yeah? What what was your initial impression of the character? Uh, it was it was just like oh, I didn't see came out. I'm just gonna play them and then like I was do I was drop them after a week or so. But Pyramithra, I don't know this. They seem like really fun and they were, I knew they were broken offline, like online they weren't that good, but offline they were, I knew they were broken since the beginning. When they first came out, I started uh, playing out of Pyramitra, but I never uh, played them with the intention of mating them. Like, I, I always said that, okay, if anything, they're, they would be my secondary or anything. After they came out, like a few weeks later, I took a long break from Smash. And then when I came back, I just played offline with a friend and I just uh, played Parametra. I don't know, offline Parametra was like, I don't know, it was way different than online. And it was like, okay, I need to main this uh, this character because I feel like in the long term, it would take me farther than Cloud. I mean, that was, that was, that was what I thought uh, at the time. Like, I still feel this way, kind of, but I mean, I can still do that with Cloud, but it would be harder. I don't know, I feel like I would get rewarded in the future if I stick with Parametra, because they're better. And they, and they were also fun. Like, if they, were, if they weren't fun for me, I wouldn't play them, but they were like a really fun character to play with. Like, it took me a while to become good with them, like, really, really good. All I had for practice was Wi-Fi tournaments and playing parametric and Wi-Fi was, re was really bad. It was so frustrating. I felt like it would be worth it at the end. And, and it was. I mean, I got all these results 
be my main part Mitra because I feel like there's some matchups with Cloud that are just straight up impossible, really hard to play. And I have Parametra as a backup. So yeah, I feel like they uh, they helped me to get the results I got. Yeah, no, that is true. I Like, you know, Pyramithra is definitely a better character than Cloud, but I also think it takes a good player to be able to uh, lift up a character and like show how good they are. And you were the player who were able to do that. Like, like yeah, you're playing a better character, but not everyone could just pick up a better character and not like, uh, like immediately just get, you know, better results. Yeah. I feel like also Pyra Mithra have a lot of similar strengths and weaknesses to Cloud. And I feel like, like it, it probably helped you click with the character even more because of that. Yeah, I feel like uh, Pyra Mithra was like Cloud, but, but uh, way better in every single area. Like it's like uh, one of their main weaknesses is recovery uh, uh the same as cloud so i was like uh, i already know how to play around that like i already know i already know how to avoid getting games and stuff so it, it was not that hard to to get used to that i also feel like for it, it played similar to cloud so i feel like they i feel like they fit they fit my place are pretty good they let me like do like for example abuse advantage state like uh better than cloud because there is, uh, I felt like Cloud didn't let me do all the stuff I wanted in many areas. Cloud struggle a lot in many areas and parameters just like I can do everything I want and it worked. I mean, it, it definitely worked. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this is gonna be the final question I ask you. What is the origin of your tag? I don't I don't I don't know I don't know if you're willing to, to tell anyone about it, but I I just thought I would ask. Okay, uh, okay, I'm gonna tell you that I I refuse to tell this to everyone for a long time but i'm just gonna tell you right now but be be before okay. before you go i'm just letting you know this is going on youtube it, everyone's gonna yeah, know. know what okay know. okay okay it's it's not it's not that interesting origin like i feel like people uh i don't know make it more exciting than it, it really is so basically it basically was his uh smash for days uh there was uh this side on the video called mirrors and i had a friend who there who had a, this really weird name on the on the with you. I, I asked him like, how is it pronounced? And he told me uh, it's pronounced Fargo. And then and I was like, oh okay. And then when I when I wanted to upload a bit in YouTube, I had to create a channel like a YouTube mm. channel. Yeah. And I was like, okay, what should my name be? And I was like, I thought that was about that. But it would be boring if I made it that way. So I mean, I remember I back in the day I used to be a really big mango fan. Mm -hmm. So it was like he had a zero at the end. So it was like I can do the same thing. And and there's this Fargo with the zero. That's because of mango. Okay. So oh, okay. So I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I definitely thought that was what your tag was. Like that's why your tag was had the zero. I thought you were a mango fan. So <laughs> yeah. I yeah. So I mean. It makes sense. Uh, so, so basically, it's like it's your your friend's tag, but you added mango flair to it. Yeah, basically, uh, I'm not like really creative with tags and stuff, so I was like, oh, that sounds that sounds cool. So I'm just gonna make it, and that's zero because I'm a mango fan. Yeah. All right. Well, shout outs to Spargo with an O and not a zero. You know, for for helping create the name. Of, of, of you yeah shout out to that guy i'm not sure where, where you are right now but thank you yeah yeah if you're watching dude yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna do it for the interview once again thanks for thanks for coming on and and playing me interview it's it's it was great to hear your intake on on stuff yeah no problem thanks to you for this for this interview i really enjoy it yeah I'm, I'm glad you did so just really quick before we go where can people find you? Like, do you, you know, your Twitter, your 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 uh, Twitch, your YouTube? What 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 are your uh, your handles? Uh, I'm most active on Twitter, like at Spargo SSB, like Spargo with a zero. Uh, I have a Twitch channel. It's just uh, Spargo, like twitch.tv slash Spargo. I haven't streamed in a while, but I'm planning on streaming again soon. Yeah, once again, thank you for, for letting me interview you. Good luck at Smash World Tour. I'll see you there. I'll be there. So, oh, yeah. yeah. See you there. Yeah, I'll see you there, man. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it.